All right, y'all, a little update. Dogs are going wild because we bought some baby chicks and they're smelling where I had them out there earlier on the ground. They're inside. But anyways, it is August 23rd. This is a garden update. My beautiful celosias and zinnias are all in here blooming. I've got some moonflower. Dinner plate dahlias. Here's one. They're so pretty. Some morning glories. Those are marigolds. Some more dinner plate dahlias. We've got some zinnias that are candy cane. Love my little flower garden. These are moonflowers. This is a purple variety. It's getting ready to open. I don't know if it'll open up tonight, but they are so pretty. They spread out. There's more moonflowers. They'll be opening up. I wish I could express how good these things smell when they open. In the fall, I noticed they go from more white to like a purplish hue on them. But those are the white moonflower bush. Those are the purple. Now, this is Seymour. You know, like as in the Venus flytrap movie back from, I don't know, back in the 70s or 80s. Um, this is mostly one birdhouse gourd plant that I only fertilized twice. The whole year <laughs> and he has taken over the whole trail <laughs> he's still producing i mean there is gourds everywhere from one single plant one down here so all i've been doing other than fertilize it two times with tomato fertilizer was i come in here about once a week and i trim off the ends that are getting too long like that one i can't reach but i would trim that down if i could uh this you, know, you can see we trimmed it down and it's like every time i trim it about five or ten more gourds will form we still got some majors down here growing and they're trying to compete with the gourd. <clears throat> Let me show you how many is in this. Okay, hi biscuit. We've got two over here. Um, we still have some eggplants forming. Some cukes. More maters. More cukes, a little bit of corn. This is the um, flowers from this side. I have, ooh, I got some mold here. I need to spray this with. So I'll do that tonight too. That is a zucchini plant that I planted late. And it's got a little zucchini in there, but I'm going to spray that down tonight for that um, mold on that's growing. We've got Brussels sprouts here. We started back in March. And they're forming, finally. A little sunflower. Okay, so back to Seymour. <laughs> He has grown over to this tree. There's a couple. Uh, see, I need to come in and cut this right here off. I'll probably cut it to about right here. Look how many is forming on this, guys. One, another, three more. There's one. There's one. They're everywhere. There's one. 
I gotta position that one as it gets bigger. There's another one. I didn't even see that one. I don't know how I missed it. Cause it is huge. There's one. We got our friend down here by the maters. There's one right there. There's all kinds right here. We got a friend right there, a really big one. There's another. This is one stinking plant right there is the, the base of it. And it just spread and kept spreading and spreading and spreading. There's another. Another. There's two more. I didn't even see these. I've been out here every day picking. I've got some beans growing here, yard long beans. And I didn't even notice there was two here. Till my kid pointed it out. Several more. Seymour has taken over. There's another one. There's one. I mean, they're just everywhere. There's one. There's some more babies in there forming. Biscuit, leave the bird alone, please. Look at this. <laughs> the dogs love running through here. We've got little melon left right here. There's another little melon down here. I mean, look here. He's growing all the way over <laughs> right here. There's more. There's one. There. There's another one. I've never seen, there's one out there. They're just everywhere. There's one. And we still got some peppers growing down here. And a couple more cabbage heads I'm gonna harvest this week. Eggplants are about done. These are Peter Peppers, and it looks exactly how the name describes. Uh, but they're just now starting to form. See how that little head's forming? <laughs> uh, peppers growing here, like the uh, Advars Advarsky and mild jalapenos. Look at this. So pretty. I love my little garden. These are the elephant ears. I keep trimming them back and they just keep growing. I'm going to have to space them out further apart next year. Hyacinth bean vines. They're already forming seeds. So these I can harvest right here and plant next year. I'm gonna put some of these over here, probably on this trellis next year. So if we can get the moles and voles out, but that's why we ordered some little chickens. Maybe they can deal with them. Coxcomb. These are young, they'll get much bigger. And I ate um, some figs earlier today off these little guys. Right here we're in the middle of chicken coop build. This is locked right now. I would show it, but don't have my keys. Maybe I can add something at the end if I remember. But um, I'm going to cut a little door right there. And we're building this. One thing I've discovered because we found out this morning we have a raccoon. I'll tell that story in a minute. To keep coons from digging in, you got to put some type of wire out from it and up, like if this is bent, and then I'll attach my chicken wire and my stakes and form it, but you have to have this right here to keep coons, possums, or coyotes or whatever from digging and getting into your chickens and killing them. 
So we've got our two week old chicks in the house. We've got six and we got 10 more coming. So we'll have 16 hopefully if the ones coming in the mail makes it. I cut them a little window there. I'm gonna probably put another window on this side with plexiglass to, that I can slide up and down to remove it depending on the time of year. Peach trees are growing. Banana trees, moonflowers. Look how huge this is. It is ginormous. Those elephant ears are huge. These needs watered. These are Brugmancias. It has not rained probably in two weeks here. So if I put water on this, it will all fill out overnight. Uh, here's our mater trellis. They're growing. Need to harvest some of these before our coon gets to them. Now that we know we got one. Here's your black strawberry tomatoes. We've been doing harvesting patty pan squash. I don't know if, well, there's a little tiny one right there. Those are good. They taste just like zucchini. They got like a more nutty, like a nuttier flavor though. We got some grapes. We, I mean, I, because it's just me and my youngins and they don't take as much interest in this yet. My daughter does though, kinda. There's a lemon squash. The tomatoes here are pineapple, black pineapple, big rainbow. Um, ooh, that one's pretty. Dr. Witchies. That looks like a Dr. Witchies. Uh, black strawberry. We put some here later in the year. Oh my goodness, look at this cucumber. Uh-oh. I don't know how I missed you, but pop you off. I think these are super sweet. 100 maybe. Mm, they're good. They are sweet. Been working more on S SPLR or however you pronounce it. Shaping these apple trees. The goal is to keep them this hot and let the limbs grow out and the shoots that come up from the limbs will be kept this length or maybe a tad bit shorter you just just keep trimming them so they'll be all straight up and um, as you keep trimming them through the summer it will hopefully promote some bud growth along these shoots coming up and it will be much easier to cover these in the spring if you have a late frost and they've already started blooming i can just throw a sheet over it instead of having a big, huge, tall tree. And there's another one. My little pawpaws are over here growing. That's a peach. And that is a crab apple. That's our big pollinator. I'm letting it do whatever for all these other apples. SPLR'd, SPLR, SPLR, I don't know. We had one apple from this year. We'll probably just pluck it tomorrow or something. Okay. I need to get those maters. Oh, I forgot to show. Look at these flowers. These are okra. There's one. It's about ready. They are so pretty. I don't have any open, I don't think, on these. No. But they bloom for like a day, and then they, the blooms fall off, and then it forms the okra. And it's ready to eat in like two or three days. We dug up all of our taters. 
This is cherry trees. Here's more okra. Okra. They're going to be blooming tomorrow, probably. They're so pretty. And I did a late start of some, um, ooh, that one looks like it's almost, it's supposed to be cantaloupe and gourds over here. I don't know what that is, but yeah, that must be the female. Maybe it got pollinated. I don't know. Look here, cucumber, beetle. Oh my gosh, those things are the devil. They will kill your plants. I've been vacuuming them up. So I'm going to extend this trellis a little bit longer next year. Maybe two more panels. This is the one. Because I love the cattle panels. This is my, uh, my poor almond trees. I thought I sprayed neem oil on them um, about a month ago when they were loaded down with beetles. And it was actually um, a killer, weed killer, Roundup. I grabbed the wrong mixed container. I had two mixed containers, and I grabbed the wrong one. So I think I killed all three of my almond trees. I'm, like, really sad and chicken. See if there's any kind of green or any kind of life, but I don't know. I'm just going to leave them here and see if anything happens next spring. But I think I've killed them. That was the third one. All for June bugs. <laughs> Got more patty pan squash. Look at these babies. They're so cute. And there's a little lemon squash down in there. Cucumber beetles are all over these too, and the squash bugs, so. Dusted them. There's the other flower bed. Got tons of uh, flowers in here and some maters. I'll show these closer in a minute. And I had some cukes growing on these. We've harvested the daylights out of them, and now we've got the maters taking over the little teepees. And there we go. San Marzano's, Roma's. And Amish paste tomatoes is what's in here, and I think Super Sweet 100s or something's over here. Those are so good. They're very sweet. I've also got yard-long beans on this side, too, and we just harvested a bunch a minute ago. There's a couple growing. I'll probably harvest those maybe tomorrow or the next day. <clears throat> And some more maters and sweet potatoes and flowers all, and some carrots at the far end right through here. Guys, let me tell you what happened this morning as I walk around. My kid was going to get on the bus at 7 a.m. this morning. And first of all, I kept finding, I keep cat food out here for the cats. Hoping these cats would do something about um, the moles and voles and whatnot, you know, because this one right here is one. Yeah, you meowing? I kept noticing this bowl kept getting empty. I put food in here and it's empty. Right here. So, I got a trap. When my kid left this morning, the dog started barking like he was trying, getting ready to go run out and catch the bus. The dogs went crazy. He started screaming, bloody murder. I come out half naked, um, well, half dressed. And right here, was my four dogs and my kid standing right here. And there was a coon right here, a very big raccoon that I, the whole time I thought it was a big gray cat for the past probably six months. I've been thinking this thing is, was a cat because I see it flash and run. It was a coon and it was growling and hissing and my dogs were surrounding. I was freaking out because I thought if it gets my dogs, they carry rabies. I didn't know what the heck to do, but I grabbed <laughs> this that we were trimming something with yesterday. And I shoot it up under here, and the, one of the dogs chased it up under there, and I couldn't get him out. I, I didn't know what was going on. All I could hear was the dog and the coon both growling and barking and hissing and every kind of noise you could imagine. But um, needless to say, I've got all these chickens coming, and I don't want it killing my chickens. So we're setting out a trap. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Once I catch it, I'm going to call the local animal shelter and ask them or animal patrol. But um, I suspect it's here. I don't know because I have tons of garden stuff for it and cat food. <laughs> Uh, anyways, well, that'll be another chapter. So here's some more maters growing. I've been dehydrating these. They are so good dehydrated. You can throw them in soups, salads, you know, whatever. I put them in whatever for an extra tomato-y flavor. They're so good. Taco soup, you name it. Um, here's a big dinner plate dahlia right there growing. <clears throat> These zinnias right here are so pretty. I'm gonna save seeds from those flower heads, definitely. And these. Hold on, baby. There's more maters right in there. There's some right here. These are the candy cane zinnias. And I have my two compost bins, which is probably att attracting that um, coon. Oh, my goodness. This is our moles and voles. Did you see what they've done now? I'm telling you, it's one thing after another, and my cats don't do nothing about it. Did you see our movo pile here? <laughs> oh, my God, Harper. Sure, that's cute. We got broccoli. Yep. And, and that has been in the past, like, five days because I mowed, like, about four or five days ago. Yeah, but, like, I have, like, a 50 bows. Okay, that's fine, baby. And here we've got pawpaws growing. Harper's been helping me, ain't you? Yeah. You've been helping me out here in the garden. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't remember what all I threw down in here. Um, I might have thrown some carrots in there and broccoli. I think that's what I threw, just as, like, a fall garden to see what happens. We've got moonflowers growing here too. And I was going to show the, uh, I've got more maters right there. The, uh, coxcombs. Look at those. Now, within that, I mean, it's, it's probably the size of my hand. Um, but right through there is all the little black seeds. And there's like thousands of them per flower. Here's a littler one. These right here, little balls. Right there. If it will zoom right there. Those. The seeds are all in that. Right here. This one probably still has some. That is the seeds. Right there. Ah. Right there's all the seeds in these little pockets there's tons of them but um they generally can self-seed sometimes i'll leave a bunch here to self-seed um until they die out like until like late october then i'll cut them down and throw them in here and let it be like a bedding for next year um but uh or you can take your fingernail i also start harvesting them now or probably Right now it's August, probably around September. I'll start, they'll, they'll get even bigger than this. So this ain't even the full size. But I'll start cutting them and putting them in vases in the house. And there's like tons of seeds that falls down on the table. And then I just save them. Uh, these, I don't know if I can find any with the actual seed. No. But, um... These also, you just, after they dry up, you save the heads and there's seeds all up in them. But that is our garden update in August of 2020, August 23rd, 2022. Close out with this beautiful view. bonus I gotta show you our chicks I have started training them with I take their food and mix it with water watch this here chick 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 chick
violet and iris as the two grays here on my this end and the two little yellow ones are dixie chicken peep and the two bigger ones here um are cinnamon and butterscotch chick 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 they know yeah. this is how you train them at a young age you yes. soften their food up with water and give it to them and they love it but we got 10 more babies coming in a couple of days. I can't wait. All right, that concludes this video.